Hello friends, this is Bill Haken with another Coronavirus Comfort from the Bible and Prayer. We are in a study of the book of Philippians, and we've been looking at Philippians chapter 1, and we're about to enter Philippians chapter 2. I want to just remind you, and please get your Bible if you don't have it, and, and bring it because we'd like to have you underline some things and show you some things. Uh, the theme of the book of Philippians is joy. Eighteen times we find the word joy, rejoice, gladness. And what I'd like to show you is that each chapter has a theme. Now, chapter one is joy. The theme is joy in spite of circumstances. That's made possible with a single mind where Christ is the principle of life. And the key verse is verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So joy in spite of circumstances, chapter one. Having a single mind where Christ is the principle of life. Now, when we get to chapter 2, chapter 2 is about joy in spite of people. Joy in spite of people. And that's made possible by a submissive mind where Christ is the pattern of life. And the key verse here is verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So joy is the theme of the book. Paul wrote this book while he was in prison. And he wasn't in a prison of the pandemic. He wasn't in a shutdown because of a virus. He was in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he still said, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. So let's look at this now as we enter chapter 2, all right? Chapter 2, therefore... Since there is consolation, and the word uh, is if there is consolation in Christ, but the word if there, translated if, actually literally means since. Since there is consolation in Christ, since there is the comfort of love, consolation in Christ, number one, that means encouragement. Encouragement. Since there's encouragement through Christ and the comfort of love and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, since there's affection and mercy, Paul says there, since there are all these things, and these things uh, are communion and compassion and cooperation. Three things, communion, compassion, and cooperation. Now, when we have those three things in our life, because of Christ, because of the Holy Spirit, and if you're a believer, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Christ. Romans 8, 9, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when a person is a child of God through faith in Christ, they have inside of them the Holy Spirit dwelling. And that's the communion, the fellowship we have with God and with Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now he says, since we have these things, since we have these things, number two, now notice this consideration that Paul puts upon them. He says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Being like-minded. You see, that's not possible. It is possible through Christ. Be like-minded, having the same love. What love is that? The love of God. God so loved just white people. Is that what the Bible says? No. Or just black people. Or just red people. Or just brown people. No. It says God so loved the world. Now watch. Be like-minded, having the same love of, as God. Being of one accord. That's a very interesting phrase, one accord. In fact, I would encourage you for your own private study to go back to the book of Acts and notice in the first eight chapters how many times you find the word one accord. If the church of Jesus Christ ever got in one accord, great things would happen. In the book of Acts, thousands of people got saved. 3,000 people got saved in chapter 2. 5,000 in chapter 4. Thousands more. So much so that the enemies of the gospel said to Paul, that, uh, Peter and John rather, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. You filled the city with the teachings of Christ. Why was that? Because the believers were in one accord 
And they were not in one accord because they were the same race. They were in one accord because they had the same Lord and because they had the same mission. The mission is to give the gospel to every creature. That's the mission, to give the gospel to every creature. So Paul says, fulfill my joy so that you are like-minded. Have the same love. Be of one accord. Be of one accord. That, that is true Bible unity. Of one accord, of one mind. With one mind striving together for the cause of Christ. The mind of Christ. Uh, the bracelet was made popular years ago by uh, a number of different folks. WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? If you know how Jesus would think, then you know how Je what Jesus would do, and you can be like Christ. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask to be like him. All through life's journey, earth and valley, all I ask to be like him. I used to sing that song at Mount Lusanne, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Did you know that's the goal of the Christian life? The Holy Spirit's goal is to change us so we would be, Romans 8, 29, conformed to the image of his Son. We are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son. That's God's purpose for every believer, to make us like Christ. To make us like Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Have the same love. Be of one accord, of one mind. That's what our country desperately needs. Now we need to get through the pandemic. We need to get through the riots. We need to get. We need justice and mercy, justice and mercy. We need to have our country, our prisons system, our correction system is broken. It's irreparably broken. It's broken. It needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. That only can happen if God intervenes. That can only happen. Injustice will only stop when God intervenes and changes people's hearts. So we need to, we need to strive together and pray for God to change the hearts of people. We need to pray for revival in America. We need to pray like 2 Corinthians Chronicles 7. If my people called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God said, I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Let's pray right now for revival. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us as believers to not look on our own things, but look on the things of others, to have the mind of Christ, to have be in one accord, be of one mind, Help people to stop fussing and fighting and bickering over what the right way is to safely reopen, whether we should wear masks or not, and over which race is better. I pray you'd help people to see that we're all made in your image. And sin's marred it, sin's messed it up, but the problem is sin, not skin. And believers, especially Christians, we need to love one another, no matter what a person's race is. We need to recognize we're going to spend eternity one day in heaven with people from every nationality in the world. So we better start getting along down here. I pray for revival. I pray that you would change hearts. I pray you'd get the country through the pandemic. I pray that America would hear the wake-up call. There could be revival and that people would understand that we need God. America needs God. America needs to get back to God. America needs to get back to the Ten Commandments. I pray that you would protect the president and the leaders of our country. Give them wisdom. I pray for the doctors and nurses. Keep them safe as they continue to fight the pandemic, fight the virus. And I pray for researchers and scientists to find the cure, to find the medicine that will stop this. We thank you, Father, that you hear us, and that you long to, uh, for us to come to you. And we do this because you are the same. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so we come to you because of Jesus and ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior, with thanksgiving. Amen.
Thank you very much, friends. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.